Welcome, we're going to look at solving some indefinite integral problems. This will be more of a review from the ending part of your Calculus 1 class. I like to do a few examples of those before we jump into the actual quote Calculus 2 type integrals, just to make sure that we're somewhat refreshed on our technique. Uh, with an indefinite integral, you will have an elongated S, the integral symbol, but you won't have lower and upper limit numbers at the top and bottom. It's just going to be another function, specifically the antiderivative of the function given. So if we take the integral of x to the 3 halves minus x plus 1 dx, we can take it one term at a time. With algebraic terms, you add 1 to the power. 3 halves plus 1 is 5 halves. Divide by your result. Move to the next term. This is an understood x to the 1, so if you add 1 to the power, you get 2. Divide by the result. Don't change your signs. And then any constant, like a 1 or a 5, whatever, its antiderivative will be that number times x. So that's a 1x. Plus a constant of integration. Remember, the derivative of a constant is 0, so there could be a term in here. We just put a, add a constant of integration to make it official. Dividing by 5 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 fifths. So a cleaner answer would be 2 fifths x to the 5 halves minus x squared over 2 plus x plus c. If your problem has a radical, for example, a square root, and some constant, you can always pull the constant out front. So you can pull your 3 out in front of the integral symbol. A square root, you can write as a power of 1 half. Now let's remember the rule overall. If you have an algebraic term to a fraction exponent, rational exponents the better way to say it the number in the bottom of that fraction is the root that you take so the nth root of your algebraic term to the m power and so that's where i made the transition from square root of x to x to the one half add one to your power you get three halves divide by the result Dividing by 3 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds, so it's 3 times 2 thirds. Your 3's cancel. Don't forget your constant of integration, so we have 2x to the 3 halves plus c. You could translate this back to a radical. It would be the square root of x cubed. So your final answer, if you went back to a radical form, would be 2 times the square root of x cubed plus c. A few examples of trig, and if you've had um, some time off from Cal 1, you may need to go back and refresh yourself on derivatives and antiderivatives of trig functions. Those can be found in your Google Drive folder for the class, uh, specifically in the third folder where it says formula sheets. You can go into that and view these. They're also in your e-text if you want to dive into that. Tangent has a derivative of secant squared theta, so that's why tangent is the antiderivative of secant squared theta. The antiderivative of negative sine theta is positive cosine theta plus your constant of integration. You can always check your problem by taking the derivative of your answer and it gives you the problem from the beginning back. Next example, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine theta. The antiderivative of cosine theta is just straight up sine theta. Third term, the antiderivative of your constant is the constant times the variable plus C. I want to do one that has um, a couple of them actually that have exponential terms. Uh, the first one is going to be the exponential term e to the x. 
Now, just to isolate the trig and the exponential part, I'm gonna separate these. You don't have to do this, but it, I just did it to isolate. I pulled my multiplier or scalar two out times the integral of cosine x dx plus, and then I pulled the five out times the integral of ex dx. The antiderivative for cosine x is sine x, so this first part is two sine x. E to the x, as long as the power is just a variable, it has a very special relationship. The derivative of e to the x is also e to the x. The antiderivative of e to the x is also e to the x. So as long as your power is just x, its antiderivative or derivative will be identical. Don't forget your constant of integration. Another exponential term can be one that has a variable in the exponent, just like e to the x, but where e is Euler's number, four is some other constant base. If that's the case, there's a special formula for it. The antiderivative of two x is x squared. x squared's derivative is two x. Exponential term where the base is not e has an antiderivative where we're going to make a copy of 4 to the x and then divide by natural log of the base number. Up here, there's actually an unwritten ln of e in the denominator, but we don't have to write it because natural log of e is 1. So let me make a little note here. The antiderivative of an exponential term where you have a numerical base is a to the x over natural log of the base. There we go. Um, I hope this video has helped refresh you your memory on indefinite integrals. Indefinite integrals have solutions that are also functions. The next video will have definite integrals and you'll start seeing lower and upper limits below and above the elongated S. And those will have finite values. So um, reach out if you have any problems or questions by email phone, swing by the office, or just ask in class.